What I will say is right now the Senate is the most privileged nursing home in the country. I think that we do need mental competency tests for anyone over the age of 75. I, don't, I wouldn't care if they did them over the age of 50. But these are people making decisions on our national security. They're making decisions on our economy, on the border. We need to know they're at the top of their game. In a recent poll, a majority of Americans, 76%, said they are in favor of making politicians over 75 undergo a mental competency test. Just 13% opposed the idea. It's worth noting this sentiment is shared across party lines with 84% of Republicans and 70% of Democrats favoring such a test. Now, in the United States, David, the president does undergo a fit for duty, annual fit for duty screening. But members of Congress and surely here in Canada, parliamentarians do not, the prime minister does not, to the best of my knowledge. Yeah. What do you think about that? I was, I was talking to Brian earlier about it, and, and uh, I think he's saying. Uh, Brian saying that it's a physical test, not a mental competence test. But that's I, the fit for duty screening for the president. You mean? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so physical, I, I don't, I don't. If they want to have that, make it a public test. That's okay with me. Uh, it's not a competency test. It's a, it's whether or not you're physically well. I mean, some people are really good at thinking, even though they're not very good at physical things. So it, to me, it's just mixing things up that unnecessarily. The fit for duty screening mm. is it purely physical? What do we know about it? I believe it's a bit physical and a bit cognitive, but it's not a competency test. Um, I don't want to sound too cynical as someone who spent my career following politicians at all levels around, but there's a good chunk of them would fail a competency test regardless of their age. So, um, you know, I think you'd have a hard time convincing politicians to do it. It's like getting turkeys to vote for, for Thanksgiving dinner. It's not going to happen. Um, but the the idea that we should be looking at are they able to continue do, doing the job, I think is valid. The U.S. Senate has, um, you know, it, it's filled with people who are the wealthiest in the country and the age is at the, the extreme high end. And, um, you know, are, are they people that could give wise counsel? Yeah. Could half of them continue serving? Yeah, but, you know, you've, you've got to have questions about the others. When Mitch McConnell's freezing up, when Dianne Feinstein's being wheeled in, and doesn't seem to know what's going on. But let's bring it home, John. Well, I, I, sorry for being cynical, uh, talking about politicians. I don't know, A, what that test would look like, and secondly, I would leave it to the politicians who are actually then supposed to implement it. Like they would have to bring it in by legislation of some point. And we know in the United States that we get appealed all the way to the Supreme Court, so it would take years to do. Anyways, look, I, I can remember polling numbers that I did in 1990. I can actually remember them. Can I do a, uh, uh, some kind of a test where I have to choose between four different things to go to the grocery store? Oftentimes, no. Um, even when we have circumstances at work where they're testing me on my cybersecurity knowledge, I'll get 80%. I don't know whether that's good enough to be president of the United States or any place, but I'm not going to be necessarily competent in, in everything that I do. So I, again, I come back to the practicality of this. We can have these notions. What it does, however, is heighten the awareness of individual constituents to take a hard look at the people that they're electing and have their own acid test for this. And yes, it may come every four years or even sooner for that, but those are the times that there is time to make the decision, and that means an aware constituency has to be in place. Is it ageist, Rudy? Because I can certainly think of a lot of 40-year-olds who are incompetent. Well, you just have to look at our federal government and our leadership there, and I don't, you know, they're very useful, they look very helpful, I don't consider them very competent, in particular, you know. Um, now, I, I think it is ageist, and you know, going back to a point, I think television show business has really ex exacerbated the most superficial aspect of people, right? They see somebody, they see them, uh, that they're, they're old, and uh, popular culture just feeds into the idea that that's what you fixate on. Canadians are generally in favor of term limits. Brian, do you think that older politicians have a responsibility to retire to make room for younger people? Um, I'm not against the term limits that the Americans have for the executive branch, but I'll tell you why I'm not crazy about term limits for um, MPs. In our system, you get elected and maybe you get elected as um, an opposition MP and you might serve a term or two there. Then you get a shot at being in government. Well, being in government is vastly different than being in opposition. And it takes a long time for you to get to know how, you know, let's say you get appointed to cabinet. It takes you a long time to figure out how 
the department actually works, which bureaucrats are telling you the truth, which ones are lying to you. That's always happening. One, uh, you know, one cabinet minister I remember telling me saying, we get shuffled every 18 months to two years. That's when you start to know your file. So you need to be around for a longer term. And if, if you were limited to eight years and then you're out, you, you might not even get a shot at being in government. Listen, I think it should be self-imposed. And I don't think people should serve any more than three l limits. I was in three levels of government, and, that, and that's what I understood. You should get out of it. But on the other hand, it should not take, you have to be really clear why you're taking away people's right to choose who represents them. I do think it takes a certain degree of self-awareness, though, to know when is the right time. Well, that's one of the factors that goes into it. Yeah. And you can also judge some, and we've said all said it in one way or another, age, uh, age is, uh, young people do not have a monopoly on wisdom. They don't have a monopoly on fair play. They don't have a monopoly on, on, on knowledge of what's required. Neither do old people. That's why it's an open book to me. Open it up, keep it open. Don't shut it down. Don't take away the choice. That's what the democratic process is about. All right, hold that thought. We'll pick this up on the other side. Don't go away.